My name's Tom, and I'm leaving the grind behind and hitting the road in search of adventure in my custom tiny studio on wheels. Welcome to Casa. Nowhere. Don't forget to subscribe. You wouldn't want to miss anything. Well, hello, Internet. As you can see, I am no longer in Texas. I am in the show me state. So let me show you what I've been up to. Firstly, if you are here for the diesel heater content, please jump ahead to the time on the screen. However, if you are following along with my adventures, I'm going to go over some of the projects I did to get ready to hit the road again. And I am happy to say that my original punch list is now all done down to the last little bit of trim at the front of the trailer. On that note, let's get to work. So I mentioned I had some projects I wanted to do on the trailer, and that is the order of business for today. I'm also testing out a new camera, so let's get to it and see how this goes. The light here on the side of the trailer, that one light got water in it, and it stopped working. So I ordered the exact same replacement and just switched it out. That was a piece of cake. I did note, however, they now sell these lights in different light temperatures. I will link them. I would have went to a warmer light temperature, but I wanted it to match the other, so I just went with the exact replacement and put it in. No problems, works great. Now, another thing that wasn't really a failure but it was only a partial success. I have this camera at the front of the trailer and I can use that to find the hitch when I'm backing up. Very often, this front of the trailer was in shadow and I couldn't see the hitch when I was backing up. So I tried painting the hitch with this bright paint and I am hoping that will let me see it in the camera they have this molded close there on this left side but typically when you're dealing with this hitch you're getting out of the driver's side of the truck and coming around on this side so i went ahead and got a paint marker and just make sure that i don't forget that back is locked oh i also i installed my t-level I just used double-sided tape. This isn't something I'm fixing today, but these tires that the trailer came with are freaking junk. I don't know if you can see there. They're already worn down to the wear bar. So I have cleaned out this whole area because I want to replace this heater or at least the circuit board and the thermostat. This is my replacement heater, which has the more feature rich controller. I could either replace this whole thing, but I hear these internally are all the same. It's just a different circuit board. So I think it may be better to replace the circuit board and thermostat. And then that way I can carry around this fresh heater as a spare. So it looks to me like all I have to do to take the circuit board off is remove this one Allen bolt. Wasn't too bad. I am going to take a picture of this just in case. And then I think I just remove these connectors. All right, let's go see if it's just that easy on the other end. <laughs> Before I start tearing things apart in the back, I'm going to disconnect the power from the heater and the water pump. All right, let's see if this works just like the other. Well, it appears to be, although this is a Phillips and not the... where it goes into the board that's hardwired. So <clears throat> we'll need to remove that. 
But first, we'll move these one at a time. That's always a good idea with a project like this. It does look like it is the same connector and the same pins are there. All right, that should do that. While I'm here, I will make sure my fan's not rubbing. Seems to be good. That is something when you get these, sometimes in shipping, they can be rubbing. I did check it before, but hey, I got it open. Oh, that looks pretty good. Clean on the outside, at least. All right. All right. That is reseated. Put the ring back on there. I'm now just going to free up this old controller. Also freeing up the wire that goes to the thermostat because I'm going to need to pull that up into the cabin in order to connect the new thermostat. Need to get some slack on it. And then I'll have to re-secure it. Hopefully that'll be enough slack. If not, I'll have to disconnect this, but let's see what happens. All right, so the circuit board is switched out and the thermostat is switched out. So I'm gonna go power it up and let's see what happens. Got a E9, which I think is temperature sensor. I am glad I took that picture. I still have my E9. I see the problem. So the connection points are apparently different on the two. Well, maybe not. Hopefully that didn't damage anything. I had the fan and the sensor reversed. But they are pinned out differently, so it's okay. It's interesting it didn't tell me it didn't have fan. And success! I would say if you are tackling this project, pay very close attention to where you connect the fan and the temperature sensor because they have the same style connector and it is very easy to connect them in reverse. Luckily, it does not do any damage if you do. But with that project done, I cleaned all the desert dust from the outside and inside of both the truck and the trailer. And I took the trailer in for new shoes. I ended up going with the Goodyear Endurance tires, which are supposedly some of the best trailer tires you can get. Then I did one more project before I left. You may remember a few months ago, I had some problems with the back doors of the trailer rubbing a little bit and not lining up. I did finally talk to someone who advised me on the proper way to deal with that. And what you actually need to do is to loosen the bolts where the door attaches to the hinge, then jack the door up and retighten them and the doors are now aligned perfectly. However, they also inform me that this is something that is probably going to need to be readjusted periodically. For now, they're perfect and I know how to deal with them into the future. So let's get to where I am now. I found a nice boondocking spot here on the edge of this lake in the Eastern Ozarks. It has been very relaxing and that 
is much appreciated after all the rushing back from Arizona and doing all those projects on the trailer. Having a couple days of peace and quiet has been just great. I'm certainly going to dive more into this first solo boondocking experience in the next video, but I believe this video is probably getting a bit long, so I'm going to wrap it up. As always, thank you for watching and have a good one. If you made it this far, why not go ahead and hit that like button? I sure would appreciate it.